Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Clownversation. Yes, it's Friday. It's Clownversation time. It's so nice to have you here. Today, I'm going to be talking to the amazing, fabulous and talented Toby Park from Spy Monkey. So don't go away. It's just a conversation with a fellow clown. It's not very serious. We're clowning around. It's really just a clown There, that's my version of rock and roll, complete with distortion. I hope you enjoyed it. So today I'm going to be talking to Toby in just a moment. And if you're new to the Clown Spirit family, you're so welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. And also, why not give the video a like and share it with your friends? I am Barnaby. If you don't know, I am the founder of Clown Spirit, where we use the power of clowning to bring lightness, joy and connection to your life and the lives of everybody around you. Our mission is to unleash as many clowns into the world as possible. And we're doing what we can. So please jump into the chat and say hi. Let us know you're there. Deborah Jackson, Catfish. Hi. Hi can see your comment there lovely so yeah it's this is a conversation guys so what that means is that it's me talking to an amazing guest but it's also all of you in the community jumping in and being involved and asking your questions because Toby would love to take your questions and making comments and just kind of generally pitching in saying what you think sharing your experience and that's how we kind of grow and generate community now, before we get started and I bring Toby on, I just have a couple of announcements to make. And while I'm doing that, why don't you jump in the chat and say hi and let us know where you are today and how you're doing today. So first of all, this Sunday, we have an amazing masterclass, online masterclass with the master of all the eccentrics, Avner, Avner Eisenberg, the eccentric. He's gonna be giving a two and a half hour masterclass. We're calling this Clown X. This is a series of masterclasses. There's one a month. We had some amazing ones already with Shannon Kalka, Jeff Johnson, Joe Diefenbacher, extraordinary masterclasses that were just so, so valuable for me and for everyone who attended. Tom um, the day after tomorrow on Sunday is Avna. Then in April, we have Moshe Cohen. In May, we have the amazing Olivier Ugtero, who does uh, hospital clowning and clowning with people uh, who have dementia. Um, and then let me see, in June, we have Patrick van der Boom from Norway. And later in June, sort of just on the cusp of July, we have Michelle Matlock, who's incredible. We have many more amazing people coming over the months following that. We have Jan Henderson. I'm hoping to get De Castro. I'm hoping to get um, I'm talking to John Davison. So there's a lot of really cool masterclasses coming up and this is called Clown X. And you guys can actually sign up for Clown X and it works as a monthly membership. So you just pay $39 a month and you get to attend um, the, the Clown X every single month. And not only that, uh, there's the, the URL. So you can sign up right there. The cool thing is when you sign up, you also get access to all the past ones, the recordings. So you sign up now, you can take Avner's class on Sunday, but you can also see all the masterclasses that have happened up to this point. There's also an amazing annual membership offer, which you'll see if you go to that page right there. Second exciting piece of news, I'm opening up the Clown Connection, which is my eight week course for another run in April and May backed by popular demand. I only take 10 people each time and it's an eight week course where we kind of get to just talk about clowning and I get to share with you a lot of the, the research and practice that I've been doing over the last um, kind of 15 or so years. It's really a kind of cool experience because there's not only clown theory, but we put it into practice in online workshops every week. It's going to be in April and May and next week is the early bird week. So if you want to get in with a great discount, then go to my website, which is right there at the top, just right above my finger, clown-spirit.com. If you go there, you'll find out all the details and also I'll be emailing. So check your inbox. If you're not in our mailing list, then go to that website and join our mailing list as well. So many opportunities, so many ways to get involved in clowning. And 
let me just jump back to the comments here. Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Rocket Raisin from Germany, Lake of Constance. It sounds beautiful. Um, Lectura Expressiva, Carmen Pardo. Hello from Spain. Mr. Hoy. Hello from Michael in Thailand. Hi, Michael in Thailand. So cool to have you here. Bev's Web in Northampton, UK. About to do a long course with a week long course with Toby. I read long course and then I read week long course, which changed. It doesn't week doesn't seem that long, but I guess in clown terms, it is amazing. That's going to be a wonderful workshop. You already worked with him on a Jubilee show last year. Very cool. Mr. Hoy met Toby and all the spy monkeys some time ago in Sheffield. Yes, the amazing spy monkeys. And we're going to talk about them in just a moment. So, folks, Toby, I'm so, so excited to be talking to Toby today. Um, he is the third and probably final member of Spy Monkey that I will be talking to on Clownversations. Toby is a creative innovator whose comic originality and flair, alongside those other three members of Spy Monkeys, has helped really redefine British theatre comedy. They've been working together since the late 1990s, and they produced a series of hit shows, including Coop, The Complete Deaths, the comedy content for Cirque du Soleil's Zumanity. And, you know, Toby for a long time has played um, uh, often the straight man, not always, uh, next to the uh, madcap antics of performers Petra Massey, Aitor Vasauri and Stefan Kreis. Um, things have changed recently and we're going to hear about that. Toby has a new venture called the Theatre of the Funny. Um, his his experience and training go back a really long way, and I, I don't want to um, go through the whole thing. You can read it underneath the, the video. One thing that popped out of interest to me, which I'm going to ask Toby about in a minute, was that he was one of the improbable theatre life game company, which was a show I absolutely loved and saw a number of times um, with Phelan McDermott and uh, Julian Crouch way back, way back. So as I mentioned, since the death of Stefan Kreis in 2021 and Petra moving away to the United States, Spy Monkey have kind of been in this process of reinventing themselves and have created this manifesto called the Theatre of the Funny. And Toby's going to talk about that in just a moment. So why don't I stop talk about, talking about him and actually welcome him onto the Clown Versation stage, Mr. Toby Park. Wow. Wow. Oh god, I hate seeing myself. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna. I've just got you zoomed in, Barnaby. So I don't have to see my okay. weird face. You know what I do sometimes is I take a piece of paper and I just yeah. put it over over That's myself. It. Like, so That's it. Paper. You need like so the right size sticky note, don't you? <laughs> That's you a <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much for coming on. I'm good. It's very nice to be. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Now I know you had Petra on a couple of weeks ago, and I I really wanted to have a look at nonsense that she was uh doing and um uh and but I, didn't get, better. I didn't get to it and that's it's probably better that i, I it's probably better that i'd say that to later for a later treat you, you might have felt intimidated by just how funny she was that's it i wouldn't <laughs> want that <laughs> he was. and the funny thing is i wasn't funny at all on our conversation he was actually very serious really yeah, I he was, was serious he was, quite, he was quite serious i mean there were moments but Petra was just like hilarious from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah. I toys, I toys. He's quite a serious guy, you know. Mm -hmm. He he takes he takes it seriously, um, yeah. and he is a philosopher. You know, he did he did a degree in philosophy at university, and um, you know, he he. It's always brilliant listening to I talking about the work because because it's serious takes it seriously and that you know that that thing of trying to what what became this manifesto the theater of the funny was sort of a trying really sort of taking that uh as a a a, a bit of a project to try and to try and sum up in some way a manifesto for our values how we make work what we think is important What's different about perhaps the way that we work than people who are used to, you know, we're used to making work and we're used to 
talking about how we make work often with people who understand that implicitly mm. but the wider theatre making community and the wider world don't aren't, aren't like that so for, for funders for you know people who are uh, involved in allocating money uh, for people of the press, you know, to have to have something which which says this is this is kind of in a nutshell who we are and what we stand for and why it's why that's quite political uh, was a really really good uh, good exercise. Yeah, well, I'm curious about that um, political part. Um, I, so, well, let's come back to that. So when you were kind of creating this manifesto, as far as I can tell from reading it, you had to really kind of go back and do a lot of reflecting on Spy Monkey and the process you'd been through. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if maybe we could do a little of that here yeah. as well. Like sure. what, what were the moments and, you know, let's go right back to the beginning. Like what, mm -hmm. what was sort of the genesis of Spy Monkey? And well, you were you were already performing at that point. <laughs> So the, the the sort of where Spy Monkey started was um, I was working in Switzerland with a, a theatre company there called Karls Kuhne Gassenschau, um, who are uh, very well known inside Switzerland for large scale um, theatrical open air uh, events, kind of it, sort of on the scale of our chaos. Um, in Swiss German, um, so massive stunts, people flying through the air, uh, a lot of water, a lot of elemental kind of uh, mad stuff, stuff that you can only do in Switzerland because they've got the resources. And weirdly, they don't have the same um, safety concerns that they do here. I mean, you'd think that's, that the Swiss would be really like, you know, yeah. kind of, uh, quite, quite officially you know minded yeah. but actually they they can the Karlskine Gassenschau guys get away with all sorts of things that you wouldn't get away with like health and safety um stuff uh, certainly in this country and in the United States I'm sure would be would be problematic so anyway I was working with them um uh, on a show a, a, a show in a quarry uh, we had a commission to do a show for the 150th anniversary of the Swiss Rail um, in the Zurich Hauptbahnhof, the, the main railway station. So they wanted us to create a, a big show there. And I persuaded the guys at Karlsruhe and the Gassenschaft to do some, some auditioning in London uh, to find some good good performers. And were you were you performing with them with that? I was. I was. I was a, a, a joint musical director with my friend Neil Philby, and uh, and also acting as, in it as well. And yeah. would you say you were clowning at that point, or was it more sort of act, straight acting? Yeah. I mean, it was. F yeah. Yes. I guess so. Yes. I. I. I my first uh, clown partner was um, a guy called Udo Zwilling, a uh, brilliant German uh, from Rüsselsheim. Uh, in rhine main gebiet in Germany, uh, and we had a we had a juggling comedy uh, juggling comedy rock and roll band called the Jumping Juggins that we used to do. We used to do street theatre and kids parties and stuff, uh, which is where I went after I had been. I'd met them in Bristol at full time, right? Because you were at full time. That's right. I was at yeah. full time. Um, so I visited them. Uh, met this really uh, cute girl there uh, who I you know was quite a lot of the reason for going back and, and working, <laughs> working there, uh, who is now my wife um, so yeah so Udo and I went to Edinburgh we had a show called Ouroboros uh, which was kind of a, a, a stupid version of, the, of a creation myth with like physics and you know uh, uh, yin and yang and it was sort of a bit new age mumbo jumbo um but quite you know funny funny show um anyway yeah so how did i get into that oh yeah so i would I, I was i was really interested in clown and i was interested in music um and those two have always kind of rubbed up a, a, a little bit in competition with each other somehow 
Um, so in Switzerland, I was being employed to do the music, but but from the point of view of somebody who understands theatre and mm -hmm. knows about how how theatre works and physical theatre, and I, I'd met these guys at, at um, Philippe Gollier in Paris, um, and so I tour came along to that audition, yeah. and Petra came along. It was the first time I'd met Petra. Um, I thought I had already met some years before uh, working with the great Argentinian clown Gabriel Cham Charmé Buendia. Oh, yeah, I know him. Uh, who was doing a... I'd done Gollier with him, and then he was teaching in Madrid. Uh, and I thought was it at his workshop, and I thought didn't speak any English. I spoke no Spanish, but he was the... <laughs> funniest person I had ever seen. He was yeah. just phenomenal. Um, and then, so next time I saw Itor was was in London, uh, this is like four or five years later, he was studying at Gollier at that point. So I invited him along to this audition for, for Carl Scooney Gasson show. So those two guys came and we did this show uh, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, and with one of the guys that we were working for, Pal Weilenman, we thought it would be nice. It was a big show, and it wasn't a very successful show. Uh, it was it was a bit of a flop. Um, mm -hmm. But we were having a brilliant time uh, in our dressing room. Yeah. Uh, and we thought if we could make the 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 this brilliant dynamic that is is in this dressing room, if we could present that in, in, for an audience that would be interesting so we thought let's do a winter as kind of side project a little winter project come to brighton we invite a director to come and work with us and we try and make a show um so that's what we did what was yeah. that what was that show so that was um that was stiff mm. uh, and the director was cal mccrystal yeah. Um, which was uh, very fortuitous. He just started directing uh, with people like us. Um, he just had his first first success with them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Cal really kind of molded us. Uh, he create he he kind of created the band. He was the you know he's the Brian Epstein of, um, of Spy Monkey. But was it just the three of you in that show? Was that, in that, huh? was that just the three of you in that show, or you thought? No, it was so Pal Pal Weilenman, uh was this Swiss was this Swiss guy uh, who who we were working for from Carl's Kinder Gasson Show, and he just did the first um, that that first production and the first bit of touring uh, at the end of ninety eight, beginning of ninety nine, and then he didn't want to continue, so we we looked around for a, a funny German speaking. Uh, <laughs> it, it was it, in the show. There were kind of me and Petra two English people and then a Spanish and a German. It felt like a, a, an, an interesting sort of Euro, I mean, obviously Eurocentric dynamic, but um, but with with an interesting, yeah, an interesting mix of uh, 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 people speaking English as a foreign language. Yeah. I feel uh, like it was Stefan I saw in Stiff, but maybe it wasn't. I don't, I'm probably. not really sure. Yeah, probably. I mean, it, Powell only, did like we did a week of performances at the Tristan Bates at the Actors Centre in London and a bit of touring in um, uh, uh, um, Bath at the Bath. What's that little theatre at the but in Bath? Not the Egg. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I you know the one I mean. Yeah. Um, I what it's called. So yeah, we we so you, you would have seen it with Stefan in because because yeah. we hardly did it any any stuff with Pound. So, what were you, did you feel like you were successful in bringing that dynamic? And what what was that dynamic in the dressing room that you that you wanted to bring onto the stage? Um, it was it was just kind of having fun. It was just having a laugh, really. It was just being stupid, and uh, we 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 had a really good time. Um, I mean. It's funny, Itor is, you know, Itor is my best mate and Petra's my best mate. We've, we've got to know each other and we've kind of fallen in love with each other through working together. 
mm. and through being being making a little a little art family together mm. um so yeah it was it was a good uh, it was a good instinct i mean i i made i tried i tried to do that sort of produce a show you know um a, a few years before um coming out of Gollier, i had a company in in um cologne called comic con we did a, a polyglot version of ubu Hua by alfred jarry where everybody spoke their own language um with guy with guy darknell do you know guy mm -hmm. yeah I, guy directed us my cousin ben park did the music um it was with gabrielle Char gabrielle charme i was in it um uh, it was it, it was fun, but it was a, um, a business nightmare and disaster. And <laughs> I thought, oh, mm, I, I, I'm just going to lose money doing this. So I sort of waited for a while and worked with lots of other people before it felt like this thing with Petra and Eitel was was more of a, a goer. But I, I suppose I had been sort of waiting for the right for the right people to to come along to do that so was there um because it seems to me like that there is this particular dynamic amongst you where you tend to be the kind of high status mm. um um bringing that kind of authority and desire for control and mm. order mm. and uh i mean the others play that role too sometimes but but really uh, badly <laughs> yeah. you do it really well <laughs> but that's Cal. That was Cal. That was yeah. that was Cal saying, "You are not funny talking to me. You are not funny in the way that they're funny." And that took a that took that was hard. That was that was quite painful to acknowledge that I'm not I'm not funny like I toys. I'm not funny like Petra is. Yeah, like if you just put them in front of an audience, they just the audience just starts laughing. Yeah, that doesn't happen with me. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, oh yeah, it's, it's difficult to accept that. Um, and Cal had to work really hard on me to get me in a place where that was a pleasurable thing. Mm. So to be that first show of, um, uh, where, so it was a show about, it was basically a show about an actor, a serious actor, trying to put on a serious play about his wife's funeral. Yeah. And he's hired three idiots to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's hired the idiots because he thinks that he's better than them and that he can control them. <laughs> and they just, they just go off on their own little journey of trying to make it more more interesting because <laughs> they worry that the audience is a bit bored by <laughs> the serious idea but all of that stuff it makes sense talking about it now but when you're actually doing it at the time you know this is all uh a posteriori i believe is the term <laughs> it's like it's all after the event it's like making sense of it once it exists um but, but there was something about that dynamic that um because i've heard you talking a little bit about clown i think there's a video i saw of you teaching a workshop and um you're just talking about clown and you're talking about that a lot of what you do is just sort of noticing what's actually happening in the room mm -hmm. you know the real dynamics of the truth yes of what's happening and then yes. trying to capture and hone in on that yes yeah so was that present was that sort of dynamic between you a little bit present anyway of you being the more serious or the more um no cal had to work on that mm. i mean what once we understood that that's that's what the dynamic was then you could um, then then that's that's been that's like that's the band then that then then we understand we understand what the dynamic is we we have we can have a vocabulary as creators about okay so in this uh, in this show um mr murdstone is the character that i had in stiff wants to do moby dick 
um, and everybody says, yeah, great, let's do Moby Dick. And, and then Petra's thinking, yeah, I want to do Moby Dick because I've got no idea what Moby Dick <laughs> is, but it sounds pretty important and I probably get to wear a really good dress. <laughs> there might be some fish involved and I can show my skills as a, you know, <laughs> some mime artist doing fish. <laughs> um, uh, Stefan's thinking, yeah, Moby Dick, great. I can be a, you know, I can, I can fall over a lot and try and harpoon people. So that, because we're, then we understand, we know, we sort of know what the dynamic is, like we, 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 we can make sense of it. So that help that really helps in, in, has helped in our writing process. Yeah. Um, and then you think about, you know, there are things that, that we think about in terms of, gate crashes at the party you know like what's the most inappropriate number to have and so there there are various strategies and um writing like writing strategies that we that we employ um which are you we find useful so like something that we've never done before a skill that we've, oh, yeah. we yeah a new skill that we need to learn how cal mentioned that i think when i interviewed him about, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what have you always wanted to do? You know, yeah. the one thing that you've always wanted to do. Hoverboarding, uh, that was ITOS, right? Hoverboarding, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, music, writing and producing music for me has always been exciting. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously that is quite a thing, that, that lends lots of theatrical treatments um so did you yeah. ever feel that that dynamic like did you were there ways that you needed to kind of mess up that dynamic sometimes to keep it interesting for yourself yeah, for sure i mean moby dick's a good example you know i tour um in the rehearsal process of that said um uh so i'm gonna be I'm I'm going to be the storyteller. I'm going to be Ishmael. I said, I thought that's a really terrible idea because nobody can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I actually said that, but you know, it's like I don't I think that's a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that became the show. The show became I tour proving his point that he was going to fucking be Ishmael and he was going to be the storyteller, and I I was. Captain Ahab trying to fucking get him to get on with like the story of Moby Dick and not get uh you know distracted or so that 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 push and pull it becomes be becomes the show you know that the, the mm -hmm. there is a natural order um where th things are trying to rest so if you put thing you know if you put something that is that it, it, you know, it's 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 gonna it's gonna fall. It's gonna like that, like that. exactly. And now I've broken my glasses case. <laughs> <laughs> That's an irony. I broke the glasses case. How ironic. <laughs> um, yeah. So so definitely making things so they don't fit the the uh, you know as soon as you've got a, um, a a formula, then you have to break it. Of course. Mm. Um, so yeah, definitely. I mean, but but you know, with now with directing with Ito, we it, we are basically we're just as directors, we just we are our on stage personas. You know, I'm I'm just trying to do something that yeah. looks really good and is kind of makes sense and <laughs> I lead this from here to here, and you know, there is it, it makes sense. Um, in a possibly pretentious, possibly quite funny, fun way. Yeah. I tour is like, is fucking it up and telling people like, so when you come on stage, you're going to pretend to be a, a tree uh, <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> like, and without telling anyone else. Yeah. Why is the core, why is the chorus behaving <laughs> like that? Why? Why are they like thrusting their stuffed rabbits at the one of the soloists? Like, why do they all have their arms up in the air like this? <laughs> yeah, 
and that, so that that dynamic it's it's how it's now it's how it's sort of how we work um, that's great so you're like a double act of directors yeah yeah that's fun yeah yeah it's been it's been really a really good discovery um that 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 can work even when we're not actually on stage when we're just trying to mm. lead a, a project and when you're leading you are kind of on stage a little bit right yeah I, mean, that, I, I feel that sometimes definitely i mean teaching is, is weird isn't it teaching yeah. is feels like a, a really long extended week-long um performance of totally. trying to trying to like take take this all these relationships and all these all these people on some sort of performative journey and to deliver everybody uh, some sense of having gone from somewhere and uh, arrived yeah. somewhere else no it's uh, yeah which is just like what you're doing in, when you're performing as well right yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, you got a big laugh for the glasses case thing. Okay, how how do we know? Because somebody wrote ha 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 in the chat. <laughs> was that was that Lucy Bradridge being really really sarcastic? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was Carmen Carmen Pardo. Oh Carmen! Oh how lovely! That's nice. Yeah, That's nice. Maybe, maybe it was a sympathy laugh. Probably, yeah. Carmen <laughs> knows I need some support. <laughs> but I just wanted to point it out because you know you said about not, not making people laugh on your own, but you just did. <laughs> well, you got me, I guess. <laughs> there you go. I love. I'm very interested that these um, pictures behind you, the 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 guys with the with the like um, up, yeah. stripy updos. Is that is that a, a Native American First Nation thing or? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, those are Hopi. Kashari clowns. Okay, and that's a picture of of them up, uh, up there on uh, above your yeah your shoulder here. That one. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then this is Gardi Hutter. Yeah, I know Gardi. I mean, I I I recognise Gardi Hutter. That's Grok. Yeah. <laughs> that's Lauren Hardy. Yeah. And who's that? Oh, look! It's <laughs> us in our pants. <laughs> You've that's been there on my wall for a long time with the, it's it. Very good, very good company. That's nice. I mean, it's a virtual thing. It's not real. Just I, I guessed that. I love that. Did you, did you do the, um, the artwork on those, um, the, the little, people. the little people? No, I actually had somebody who knows how to draw. It's a cool. It's a. It's very cool. I yeah, like that. Really, I yeah, like I know. Stuff. Yeah, nice. yeah. It's very cool. So, um, oh. Comments. Makes it, it looks a bit like Pear Ubu, you know. Ubu, like the original drawings from Alfred Jarry, had like spirals and stripes and uh, stuff. Mm. Well, th there's a whole stripe thing with clowns, which is really interesting. I think um, that if you look at a lot of clown and jester costumes historically, yeah, they're often by you know uh, duo two colors in stripes. And um, why is that? Well, I don't know. But um, I mean, my theory is that it has to do with the duality of clown clowning, you know, that they're, they're sort of in this um, uh, liminal space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between opposites and playing with boundaries. So okay. it's kind of like, you know, the, the positive and the negative and yes. holding this, holding those two things in balance. Yes. yes. And that's interesting. Yeah. So Harlequin, yeah, I mean that's in stri in stripes, but yeah. in diamonds, but it's the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and there's a Bro there's a very famous picture by Bruegel called um, the Battle Between Carnival and Lent, and you know you've got on one side of the picture you've got all these um, uh, religious images, on the other side you've got these people all going going crazy having carnival. Yeah. And right in the center of the picture, there's this little this little fool. Yeah, holding a, a flaming torch. Yeah, um, in in this blue and white striped kind of bodysuit. Yeah, and kind of just moving through the middle of all this chaos. Oh wow! Oh brilliant! Yeah, look it up. The reason I leapt up is because I've just started reading um, uh, Gargantua and Pantagruel. 
Oh, um, cool. On the, the Penguin edition, I think I think there's a I think there's a detail from from that. I, it's some Bruegel. It, it would make sense that it's yeah, it probably but it's is. Nice. yeah. That's it's a I love Bruegel. Yeah, I love Bruegel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. So I just want to remind folks at home listening in that um, I know you're entranced by this amazingly high level intellectual conversation. Oh, it's, it's, it's it's heady. It's heady. <laughs> yes, let's get out of our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but if you guys have questions, this is a good time to throw those questions in and Toby will gladly answer them. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that on your behalf, Toby, but I'm assuming sure. that, um, if people have questions about anything to do with with clown. Right. Because we you know, you're a, you're a teacher. I noticed that somebody said you were teaching a week long workshop coming up very soon. Yes. In Northampton. Is that sold out or do you want to do a... It is. Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, bad luck, guys. No. Hey, you snooze, you lose. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's the second one that we've run in Northampton. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, Bev. Uh, Bev is coming along. We did a... She works with a company called Mask Theatre in, in Northampton, mm -hmm. uh, who are a community theatre company and we did an alternative history of Northampton for the the Platinum Jubilee last summer oh nice we got some uh, we got some government money government threw money around like there was no tomorrow in order to celebrate the Queen's Platinum yeah. Jubilee so with that money <laughs> we made we made a sort of historical pageant all about Northampton's fantastic history of anarchism uh, and uh uh, uh, anti-establishment, anti-monarchy. Um, oh, that's amazing! How cool! Yeah, it, it was. It was really good. I mean, fun. that's like the fool being given license to to critique the the powers. That's it. That's it. That's it. So it was um it was a committee that was formed to uh, have a tea party, and then everybody had had different ideas about what should be performed. Um, so there was stuff about God. There was a brilliant thing about um. Uh, Charles the first, no, Charles the, yeah, Charles the first, no, who was the one, yeah, no, Charles the second, who was the one that came back after Charles got his, Charles the second, no? Yeah. Yeah, right. so he, he arrived in Northampton and he gave them some money um, because they had a fire, there was a fire in Northampton, so he, he gave them some money, but being, being anti-royalists as they were, they made a statue in thanks to him, and the arm broke off, and so <laughs> replaced it. Oh no, that's right. They they dressed him up as Nero, as the Emperor Nero. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's in honor true. of Charles II. And then his arm broke off, and they just replaced it with a kind of a stick. So <laughs> <laughs> that's quite funny. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Mm. So Mr. Uh, Mr. Hoy has a comment here. Just an observation. While I was waiting for you, I watched the spy monkey. They don't have stairs where he comes from skit, which I've seen many times. Mm. And then this time I couldn't help noticing the laughter audience, the gasps, chortles, etc., that came wave after wave. It reminded me of the laughter is receptive quote from Toby and I mm. Receptive. I, I think that's... Um, that is a reference to your theater of the uh, theater of the funny of the funny yeah manifesto because you said something about infectious uh, you mean but or receptive did you, you say did, receptive? you did say something about i think you said that it's not receptive or something actually i can't remember now i don't know I maybe could... we should find it receptive maybe what you meant was um because you decided to Instead of talking about laughter, you decided to use the word funny. Yes. Ah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Laughter is laughter is a res is responsive. The funny is the thing that we're laughing at. So that felt like that was it was more active to to talk about the theatre of the funny. Um, that's right. But also, sort of, laughter is sort of a passive thing. Well, it's the thing that you it's the thing that you do. It yeah. is the response to yeah. the funny. Yeah. And so it felt like 
what are we what are we making theatre with? We're making we're making theatre with the funny in order to elicit laughter. Yeah. The funny, I mean, funny is a is is a brilliant word, and interestingly, in German, it has exactly the same uh, double connotation of strange and humorous. Oh, cool! Um, yeah, lustig. Uh, funny, uh, funny, ha ha versus funny peculiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cormish? No, sorry, Cormish. Cormish means comical and strange. Strange. Yeah. Interesting. So when you came up with that word, you had that duality in mind. Yes. Yeah. Because you yeah. want to be—you want to not only make people laugh, but you want to do something that's strange, that, unusual. That gives, uh, yeah, that 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 gives rain to strangeness, mm. peculiarity, eccentricity, mm. um, and those feel like they're important they're an important part of you know you can just be funny i mean just be like comedy is it, it, it is just it can just be funny but it mm -hmm. we find there is you know obviously there are there are more there are wider perhaps darker more troubling stranger like why am i laughing at this is is this transgressive in some ways this uh, crossing over a boundary of good taste you know and, and i think good that that those laughs were definitely something that our work with cal led us to 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 love and embrace mm. um you know like bad taste the the our love of bad taste um which is there a good course, example of that huh? Is there a good example of that um, from your shows where you were oh. playing on the edge of, of, of taste? <laughs> well, I mean, Stefan and I tour coming on stage thinking that I'm naked, whereas I'm actually in a in a bodysuit with a fig leaf on. And yes. they, they think that I'm naked <laughs> and then dancing with very badly placed fig, fig leaves. <laughs> yes. That really is dancing on the edge of good taste. Was this uh, in the, was this in Zumanity or was it? No, it's in yeah. Coops. Oh right. It's in Coops, the the naked fig leaf dance. But um, there was some nudity in Zumanity as well. Yeah, there was some nudity. Well, it was there was more complicated because in uh, in Cirque du Soleil or in, in in Las Vegas, you're not allowed to be naked and have a liquor license. So we did um, we did a, a pom pom routine, uh, a naked pom pom routine to the to the ITN news uh, theme tune. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were like changing really swiftly, changing our uh, pom poms, uh, and then swapping. You know, so yeah. I would be covering Stefan's penis. Uh, you know. All that, and then I saw was always one beat behind. <laughs> so, um, so actually, you were naked. I mean, you must have been. No, we weren't allowed to be naked. We had to have merkins, ah. um, like beautifully crafted merkins. Um, with they like Cirque du Soleil wardrobe department took little trimmings of our pubic hair to match them. <laughs> they had. They had, uh, they had little. We had little penises. Obviously, Petra had a huge, uh, huge yeah. muff. Um, yeah, it was so stupid and kind of sordid yeah. <laughs> and really smelly. You know, like up the bum, kind of. Ugh. Yeah. Um, but that's what we had. We had to do. It's yeah. ironic, you know, putting on costume to make you look naked. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Really right. stupid. Really stupid. Yeah. It's an interesting solution, though. It's it's sort of like a clown. It's a clown solution. Oh, we can't be naked, so we'll put on a costume that makes. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, that there there is an orthodoxy, or or people have said uh, have said that other people have said that you know clowns and sex clowns aren't sex. You can't have sex. Mm. Um, and I remember I remember conversations with uh, with Jos Huben about about um, uh, 
about stuff around that. We have always found lots of really stupid, funny things around sex. Yeah. But that's it. Again, that's um, it, it's a lot because it's transgressive and you can, you know, it's problematic in the sense that it, it uh, it's, um, it's licentious and, um, yeah. It crosses it's, people's, it, it, it sort of um, triggers people. Yeah. I mean, arguably there is a, there is a new Puritanism around, um, around sex. Mm. But, um, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're thinking about, um, and trying to work out how to respond yeah, to that. I think everybody is. There, there, are, there are kind of, it, it's like, there are slightly two, two different things going on, I think, and they get, they get confused. Yeah. So I don't think it's a problem to talk about sex. I don't think it's a problem to see sexuality happening on, that's uh, Ramona's bottom, you can see there, just illustrating <laughs> <laughs> that there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with body parts, is there? Um, uh, th you know that 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 is a different thing to um, uh, diminishing people because of the gender that they are, or making light or um, disrespecting uh, issues of sexual violence or discrimination or you know, all, all, mm -hmm. all of those things. And the, 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 you just have to be, you have to be conscious and you have to be up for having a conversation about what is it that, what are we laughing about? What are we, what do we want the audience to understand? Will the audience laugh at this in the right way? It, in a way that we, we're comfortable with? Will there be some people in the audience who are laughing at it, and other people who are uncomfortable about those people? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Those. That, this. That's. We're, we're in. We're in complex territory, but just have to talk about it. Yeah. To be talking about it, and have people in the creative process who are from lots of different places. And yeah. if we're only, yeah. if we're only white, you know, white middle class. European men majority, then we're gonna we're gonna have a skew of what we think is funny or what what our assumptions are. Do you know what I mean? So that's something that we we are trying to do something about, and we we try and make a start to it. I mean, this is really interesting, Toby. And um, maybe it reminds me of what you said right at the start of our conversation about the manifesto being political and i said mm. oh we'll come back to that mm. so maybe is this kind of what you're talking about yeah i mean i talk talks a lot about um maintaining a good sense of humor and that that what what we are about is is ensuring that people are people's sense of humor is exercised uh, because we do need sense of humor training we need to be able to sit in a room together and laugh at things together that sort of atomization uh, of of experience of being uh, um being an observer that, that we have with social media where we are we're all on our little devices and we're all experiencing things as individ as as solo individual little audiences and then those becoming uh, little echo chambers mm. being in a proper audience and having the infectious nature of laughter around us is that feels like it's a really important thing and that, that's what I mean about that feels like a politically important thing that we need to we need to get people to do um, and theatre I mean theatre in, in this country is in a real really really dark place yeah. uh, literally dark place because right the theaters are going to be dark if we uh funding is 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 not ca catching up with where where we are 
Mm. Uh, we're having Spy Monkey are having real, real difficult time funding work. So we're making a show for children um, uh, at the Polka Theatre in Wimbledon. We have had five funding applications turned down for a show for young people where we've got 80% of the, of the partners. Uh, it's in order to make the show have a future life. You know, it, this is a, this is really strange. Um, is so, it, th like, th there is a de I think there is a devaluing of of the of comedy of stuff that is funny. Mm. It's always valued in a different way to um, uh, to stuff that is serious or is issue based. Mm. Um, not that we don't deal with serious issues in our work, but if people are laughing at them, then uh, there's a feeling that, well, you're not really being serious about them. You know what I mean? I'm just going to take the cat out because she's just going to get pretty irritated. What? Yes. I can I can barely tell the difference when you're sitting in front of the computer and, and not because it's got... I like how you're sort of disappearing into the darkness of the gloom of... England's late evening. Yeah, I'm just going to turn the light on because I just realised it's really, really <laughs> dark in here. You're going to destroy the atmosphere. How's that? Oh, very moody. I like huh? it. Very nice. moody. Yes, <laughs> nice side light. It's yeah. Helpful. So, um, I was going to ask you, how do we get diversity? not only into our artistic community, but into the audiences as well. Because, I mean, the theatre has struggled with that mm -hmm. for a long time, that audiences, you know, are, there's an elitism and there's sort of a cultural exclusivity about just going to the theatre. So how, how do we make sure that, as you just said, we're sitting in audiences and laughing alongside people who are not just the same as us? Well, it would help if we had more uh, performers who are black and brown on stage so that you know the, the, you, the, you have to go it has to go hand in hand you can't you can't have one without the other um and i think we're we're trying to spread the word about how our work can help people be be funny and to find their the pleasure of making brilliant work so that they can go off and make their own theatre companies mm. um, for us to uh, you know to to put um other uh other ethnicities and other di diverse groups into casting in our shows is of course is of course one thing yeah um, and we're we're actively uh, engaged in doing that but you know i think it's how do we get audiences like audiences it's really hard it's really hard yeah, yeah. um but i think it feels like it feels like it's a really good new generation of of people mm. when we you know we've been running uh we've been running our workshops for quite a long time and we've we've been doing bursary places and trying to get the word out for our bursaries um, and targeting them at uh, global majority performers uh, just because it felt like that was it, it, we were not get we weren't even getting any applications for for those things so we 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 have run a number of different initiatives just to try and put that right and i think that is slowly slowly changing that feels that feels opti I'm, that feels optimistic but mm -hmm. it's hard it's really hard i mean we 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 ask people to be vulnerable yeah. in in clown we 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 ask people to be to expose themselves uh, and that is an inherently privileged thing to to do. I mean, men men find it easy to to be funny because they can uh, put on uh, 
address and their status their status goes down you know that that those tropes about um uh, travesty you know ha 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 a man getting dressed up as a, a man choosing to dress themselves in a low state in a low status way mm -hmm. that's going to get a laugh so th those those things are really bound up in what we think of as 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 funny mm -hmm. um as comedy tropes and we sort of need to unpick lots of those things and i think it's um I, we've only just started thinking about this properly. And, it's a uh, really, really interesting conversation that I've had with several other people as well, um, mm -hmm. including John Gilkey. It was a very interesting. Um, yeah. So we've been working with um, with um, Amritha, um, who, who work yeah who works alongside John um, yeah. with stuff in in LA, and she has been really, really brilliant in mm. just starting us to think about things in a completely different way um yeah she's great yes she's going to be uh in fact joining me in great. in Brilliant. weeks. so that's going to be yeah great and jos huben as well ah uh, oh, fantastic he's going to be on um and giovanni fusetti do you know giovanni no he's great oh you should tune in next week he's oh great um, cool. So there was a there was an interesting question here from Mike. This was in relation to the devaluing of comedy and the trivializing of or, or the sort of marginalization of comedy in the arts in mm. general. Mm. Is that unique to the UK or also in the US? Mm. Um, I think it's I, I think it's everywhere. Yeah, I think it's everywhere. I mean, you know, nobody ever wins an Oscar for a for a comedy film. Well, hopefully this year that'll change. Well, um, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true, actually. Yeah. I mean, if you can call oh. the banshees of the, the banshees of Inishir and or everything, uh, and everything, everywhere, all at once. Both of them. Both yeah. of them. Yeah. Comedies in a way, dark comedies. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that would be interesting, won't it? Um, but I think they are. I mean, we, you know, we've just been doing this. Um, uh, this opera in Vienna and one of the things that we one of the ideas that we like in that was that we basically Stefan was going to be in this opera um and we wanted Stefan can't couldn't sing uh it was really really like musically quite challenging <laughs> <laughs> so I thought how can we put Stefan who was based in Vienna how can we put him in the middle of this show um uh, and not have him sing <laughs> <laughs> so we thought, brilliant. We'll make him Offenbach. We'll make him the composer uh, who's come back. He's kind of come back for one night only to see his Meisterwerk. And he's really, really sensitive because people, there's no statue to him in Vienna. And he was really lauded. You know, he was, he was one of the, Vienna was where he was the most successful. There's no fucking statue to him. There's no, there's, you know, there's uh, Mozart, Strauss, everybody. Um, so that sense of having a chip on your shoulder because you're not valued like Wagner is, um, is something that we, we've had lots of fun with in that show because it's also, cause it's really true. It's close to our hearts, you know? Yeah. So that it's, it's, it's defined as light, right? Light comedy, light yeah. entertainment, you know, Offenbacher, light operas. There's Operetta, like Operetta. something smaller than opera. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yes. Or opera bouffe, no? Grotesque opera, I suppose, right. is the translation of opera bouffe, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I've, I've often said that um, the whole, Fear, fear of clowns thing and the scary clowns thing is, yeah. is sort of re repugnant for us who are clowns, obviously. But it's there's also an element to it that um, harks to a time when clowns were feared. Or I mean, I think they always have been feared to some extent because I think that clowns, um, uh, you know, a lot of those sort of scary clowns are not really clowns. But I think that true clowns are playing on the edges of um the existential reality and asking yeah. questions and yeah. making us kind of 
bringing up things that are very fearful for us because they disturb the known kind of yeah universe. I mean, there is not very much that is more scary than Chris Lynham <laughs> doing a street show in Edinburgh in like 1986. Fucking hell, he was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, and brilliant. Yeah. 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 They are. They I think they they should be. They should be terrifying clowns. Yeah. yeah. Making us wonder what the hell we're doing and throwing it <laughs> up in the air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Toby, this has been such a, a joy. And um, it's been lovely to talk to you, Barnaby. Very, very nice. Good. Thanks for inviting me. You're very welcome. Now I can go and watch Petra taking her dog outside for a poo. Yeah, do and <laughs> Take you to the toilet with her, actually, because that's what she normally does on the Zoom call. I feel like I need to do it again now to, to have this experience. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, maybe, maybe it'll happen. Anyway, it's been it's been wonderful talking to you, and just uh, you know, thank you so much for your work and for inspiring Pleasure. us all, and for for being here today. Really, thanks for it. thanks for inviting me. Brilliant. Nice one. See you later. Bye. Bye, Toby. Bye, bye. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much to Toby, and thank you all. Um, yeah, some wonderful comments coming in. Uh, Catfish says, fantabulous conversation. Thanks, bunches. Mr. Hoy says, this has been brilliant. Thanks. P.S. Love your cat. Uh, Pandora says, thank you both. Malin says, thank you. Thank you all so much, guys. Now, don't forget, um, if you want to join our mailing list, is clown-spirit.com up here to keep your inbox full of amazing offers and ideas and inspirations all clown related. This Sunday, Avna teaching Clown X Masterclass and next week, the early bird week for getting into the Clown Connection course, which is going to run in April and May. And as I mentioned, next week, I'm going to be talking to Giovanni Fusetti, um, who's a wonderful clown teacher, moves between Italy and the United States. And after that, just a whole series of amazing people coming up every Friday, folks. So thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you again next week. Keep clowning.